Welcome to Home Farm. In today's video, we want to provide you with updates on our orchard. Now, this is the first time that we've ever planted and grown our own fruit trees. And there are obviously a lot of experienced people that grow fruits all the time. Uh, but for people like ourselves, we've just had a couple of books to use as reference pieces. And we wanted to share our experiences with you. If you've ever considered growing your own fruit trees, this is probably going to be the video for you because we'll be able to describe our experiences on a very newbie level. So we have got a variety of apple, quince and plum trees um, and we'll just be going through the various trees, how they've grown, how they've adapted uh, throughout the season and which of the varieties we actually opt for. We have got a lot of different plum and apple varieties so we will be able to give you quite a wide array of knowledge hopefully uh, so that's going to be this video uh, we've already got the first video that we posted which is basically an introduction to our orchard the first three weeks this is going to be more of a continuous video now where uh, we will take you through the season and actually show you how the various trees have grown what they've produced and what the general a growing process for each of the different varieties has been. So let's have a look at what trees we've got so we can discuss these in more detail. Uh, all in all we've planted 21 trees. Uh, we've got trees on the right there by the deck. That's our veg patch in the distance with the second portion down here. If you haven't watched our first video we also had two cherry trees uh, which were located here we can see the, the holes they had a bacterial infection when they arrived from the garden center so we had to destroy them so that they wouldn't infect everything else. What I would have to add is that all of the trees that we had were bare roots which means that they arrived with their roots completely exposed so because we had 21 trees or 23 with the cherries uh, we did have to get the pickaxe out and the spade and, and dig the holes because they do have to get put in the ground as soon as possible so that they don't get damaged so that's definitely a consideration. The fruit trees have now been in for six weeks. Uh, most of them, when they arrived, uh, had buds and some of them even had flowers and blossoms that were coming out. Uh, that has very much uh, con continued to be the case. Uh, there are some of the apple variety that continue to uh, get more leaves but have lost the blossoms. The plum trees were a lot slower to get going. It took them absolute ages uh, for the leaves to start coming out. Uh, but they are now establishing. Here we have two Lane Prince Albert's uh, apple trees. They are both absolutely covered in blossoms, uh, looking very, very healthy. Uh, we will continue to obviously monitor them and see what happens to their blossoms because unlike the Howgate Wonders, which are over here, these trees arrived absolutely covered in blossoms. And since then, they have largely disappeared uh, and have actually now dried out. So we're not actually sure whether that is now part of the, the fruiting process or whether there's something else that's happened, but it's worth uh, showing what has actually evolved from the very pretty blossoms that were on this tree about two weeks ago to the condition uh, of those blossoms right now. On our back row, we've got a variety called Grenadier and we've got two Charles Ross apples further down. These have been pretty much in the same condition that they've been in. They've obviously just had a couple of more leaves coming out, generally speaking, looking healthy. Uh, not really sure what's happening with the blossoms, but again, that's something that we'll just have to continue watching. This is obviously the first six weeks that they've actually had in the ground. Fruit trees do take a long time to establish. We do water them pretty much every other day at the moment, purely because we have had an incredibly hot and dry May month. Uh, so you do tend to start seeing the leaves start wilting if you don't water them. So we've just ensured that we've kept them going as best we can. The tree that is directly in front of us is a quince tree. This probably requires the most water out of all the trees that we've planted. On really hot days, we probably have to water him daily because his leaves do start to wilt. Um, and he actually has now released his first blossom. So it'll be interesting to see how the quince progresses. The vast majority of trees on this side are plums and damsons. The tree in front of us is a Victoria plum. This was by far 
the tree that took the longest to get going. Its leaves only came out probably about a week ago. So thankfully it's established. And there's actually very little to report on any of the other plum trees, other than that they, they do want water. You do have to water them quite regularly, which we are doing. Uh, so for the time being, it is very much a, a holding pattern. There isn't a huge amount to report. It is just a matter of walking around and inspecting them every day, just making sure that they're not dry, that they are being well watered, uh, which is what we have been doing. And it is just a matter of now watching the progress with regards to the various trees. So as the season progresses, we will take more detailed updates of uh, significant developments that might be of interest and we'll be adding them to this video. It's been a couple of weeks since our last update. There's Leopold. And there has been a little bit of a transformation with regards to our orchard. Uh, the grass is getting really long. I'm hoping to get some time this week to strim it. But for the most part, the blossoms have come and gone on the majority of the apple trees. Uh, which we'll get into now. Uh, some of those blossoms have been fertilized and are transforming into little apples. So we will show you which of our varieties have fertilized and gone to apples, which ones haven't. And then we will come to the right hand side of our mini orchard and discuss our plums. Hello Leopold, say hello. No, he's exhausted. It's been the hottest and driest May in over a hundred years in the UK. So uh, it's taken a lot of effort to water and make sure that our little orchard is actually uh, surviving. For the most part, given that we've never done this before, I think we're getting the watering levels just right. The, the leaves are not drooping. And generally speaking, I think that the apple trees are actually quite happy. So these two apple trees here are the Lane Prince Alberts. They blossomed quite heavily. The blossoms are now gone. And just having a look at the actual uh, blossoms where they've been, not an awful lot has happened in terms of transitioning towards uh, apples. Uh, this has pretty much been the case for both of our uh, Lane Prince Albert trees. In fact, I take that back. We've got a couple of uh, little apples forming on this branch here. So what we're going to do is we're going to be consulting some very experienced gardeners, uh, asking their opinion as to how many uh, little apples we should leave on, on each tree, purely because this is the first year of the orchard. Uh, these were bare root trees, so we need to allow them to establish themselves uh, apparently it is very, very important in the first year that the roots obviously establish themselves so that the, the trees themselves can flourish in subsequent years. So uh, we will be paying uh, special attention to that just to make sure that we are actually growing the strongest possible trees that we can. This tree in front of us is a Charles Ross. He did not blossom at all. He has got some fantastic leaf cover though. So we are quite pleased with how healthy he's looking. These two are probably the two prettiest trees of the apple variety that we had this year, uh, when it came to blossoming anyway. They're the Howgate Wonders. Um, none of the blossoms appear to have fertilized. They are all turning yellow and I think that they will simply fall away. But we do have one fruit, uh, which is just here. So at least there is a, a chance that we might get to taste a Howgate Wonder apple from our little orchard this year. So we'll almost definitely be keeping him going. This Howgate Wonder has not um, had any fruit materialize. Generally speaking to my inexperienced eye, uh, the tree is looking quite healthy. The, the leaves are looking good. There's good leaf coverage. So hopefully he will continue to establish himself. As we work our way up the field once again, we've got two grenadier apples. So there's one back there and the one in front of us. This one has developed 
an awful lot of fruit. When I was here just uh, about a week ago, I couldn't see any. So these are uh, developing really, really quickly. It is now going to be a matter of just paying special attention and seeing how many of these apples we need to remove. And we'll be asking the experts what we should be doing and how we should be removing the apples. So this is the other grenadier. Uh, he's got far fewer uh, fruits, but generally speaking, again, looking quite good. This tree down here is the other Charles Ross. So there's a Charles Ross on the other side. We've got one here. Uh, just like the other Charles Ross, absolutely no blossoms whatsoever. And uh, just like the other one, I think looking healthy and looking strong. So uh, generally speaking, good, I hope. This tree here is the James Grieve. He is also prolific. There are loads and loads of fruits that have formed on this one. Uh, so we'll definitely be trying to figure out how to uh, thin these out a little bit. Uh, but I'm actually quite intrigued about trying these uh, apples because by all accounts, I think they'll be quite nice. Nearest to our veg patch, we have one Bramley apple. He has formed a couple of fruits, uh, which are on this branch here. Uh, if those are the only two that develop, we'll probably let those come through and we'll utilize those. So we'll quickly turn our attention now to this side where we've got our plums and our quince tree. So the quince in particular has really, really exploded. He has established really, really well after a bit of a slow start. He's now in full blossom and looking good. And uh, also the formation of some fruits. So generally speaking, the quince has been good. He does love water. We've had to water him more than most of our other trees. This Victoria plum tree in front of us was also a really, really slow starter, but he's taken off and he's looking really, really terrific now. When we spoke to a fruit tree expert out of Canada, a gentleman by the name of Harold, um, he told us something quite interesting, which I didn't know. Uh, these are European plums. So he said it's going to probably take between two and three years before we can expect any fruit uh, off them. But uh, when they do actually start to fruit and flower, they are going to be prolific. So again, I think the, the key for us, we weren't expecting too much fruit this year anyway. So we will continue doing what we're doing watering the trees, nurturing them, feeding them, and making sure that they actually uh, just establish themselves and become the prolific fruiters that we hope that they will become in the years to come. This is the Dams and Merryweather. Uh, again, looking very good, very happy. Uh, this is the other Victoria plum, looking good. So the plum trees, no blossoms, lots of leaves, and generally speaking, I think that the trees are in good nick. Located at the back is our other Charles Ross, who's pretty much following the same pattern as the Charles Ross trees on the other side. Our conference pear tree is now growing. He's completely swamped. Like I said, the strimmer is going to be out tomorrow for an epic, probably eight or nine hour session of strimming the vast majority of our field, which uh, has really just been growing at a crazy rate because of how warm it's been. So the more you read about these things, you realize that growing fruit trees is in fact quite a complicated and vast subject matter. Uh, the one thing that I've now discovered whilst uh, reading on the subject and conversing with people is that for newly established trees like ours, uh, it is very, very important that we give them the best possible start to their growing life. So uh, thanks to Harold once again, he's probably provided me with the most insights uh, with regards to what we're going to be doing right now. So this tree in front of us is the Albert Prince Lane. This is the tree that probably provides us with the best example of what I'm going to be doing today. Fruit trees have things called spurs. They are small branches that uh, actually carry the, the fruit. Uh, each year a spur will flower and one year it'll just be a normal blossom and it won't provide fruit and in the alternate years it actually does provide fruit. So what we need to do is just to make sure while our trees are establishing that we're not overburdening these spurs. So when we take a look at this, we've got one spur here, uh, which has got a fruit on it. The, no fruit there. This spur has got one fruit, no fruits on the other blossoms. This spur has got absolutely zero uh, fruits on it. So we're not actually going to have to be doing too much 
with regards to this tree because each spur is actually just carried by one fruit. So this won't overburden the tree. The other thing that has been pointed out to me is that if you don't thin your fruit out in the early years, this may actually also lead to uh, stunting the growth of trees. So we want to make sure that we're going to progress and carry on doing the best possible thing for our trees. So this is our other Albert Prince Lane. And let's have a look here. So on this spur, we have two fruits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our very sharp clippers and I'm just going to pinch that off. We're going to work our way up. That one's fine. That one's fine. Here we've got two again. I'm going to take that. You'll also probably have noticed that I did finally get around to strimming this field. I think the apple trees will feel quite relieved that I have been able to free them up. Let's have a look at this tree here. This is the grenadier. This has got a lot of uh, fruits growing on this particular spur. So we're going to get rid of three of them and just keep the one fruit. I might struggle to do this with one hand, but let's give it a bash. This weekend, I read two interesting articles about household waste. Leopold, don't eat the eggshells. Come on, don't eat the eggshells. <laughs> um, and different ways that you can utilize them. So to date, our eggshells and our coffee grounds have been ending up on our compost heap. But uh, I read something quite interesting, like I said, that I think we might just start implementing in the short term. Located in this patch, we've got four blueberry bushes. Uh, you can apparently apply the coffee grounds directly to them. It does help them. It has to be done in moderation though, because apparently the caffeine can stunt the growth of the bushes. So we'll be applying our coffee grounds though, from our morning coffee. Uh, to there directly. And the other really interesting thing that I read is that you can take eggshells. We're not prodigious egg eaters, uh, but we do have probably a couple of eggs a week. What you can do is you can just crush them down a little bit as we have. Obviously you need to wash them too. Um, and you just apply them at the base uh, of apple trees because they are a great source of calcium, which apparently helps with the cell membrane development for apple trees in particular. So what we're going to be doing is that every time we have eggs, like I said, a couple of times a week, I'm going to take those eggshells, wash them, dry them, uh, break them down as I have with this batch, and then just apply them to some of our apple trees. So I've got my clippers again. Uh, I know it sounds like I'm fussing an awful lot about these trees. I have been deliberating as to whether we've left just too many apples on here. And uh, I've consulted Harold once again, who has been very, very kind in offering his advice and recommendations to us. This particular tree still has well in excess of a dozen apples, and he's recommended that we get rid of a, a few more, purely because obviously the more fruit you have, uh, the more energy the tree is actually utilizing and actually feeding those apples. At the end of the day, our objective for having this small orchard is to be as sustainable as possible in the long term. So getting a few extra apples in the first year is kind of pointless if you're sacrificing the well-being and strength of the tree going forward. So what we're going to do is go past all of the trees once again. Just make sure that we're probably going to leave maybe five or six apples max uh, on all of them and basically just reduce the numbers. Let the trees establish, let them get a good root system going, get healthy, get strong uh, so that in subsequent years we can just start getting really, really big crops of fruit. As we can see on this particular branch, there are just a lot of uh, apples. We're going to start with the small ones, keep the bigger ones and work our way around. I think that was quite good. So what we've done now is we've left two apples on that branch. We'll probably do the same here. So we'll keep thinning the spurs out as much as we can, getting rid of the small guys. So in fact, that's only one big apple left there. We've got one apple left on that branch. 
little guy here, we're going to get rid of him. And on the last branch, we'll probably just keep two of these. The one at the end is probably the biggest, so we'll get rid of him. Bang. And let's get rid of this one here. Brilliant. So I think we'll draw this video to an end at this point. We have now thinned out all of our apple trees. Uh, for the most part, uh, there's not a single tree now that's got more than five or six apples on it. It is a bit of a, a difficult thing to do given that this is the first time you're growing apples. Uh, we've cut off probably about 20 or 30 from the trees in total. Uh, but you know, it is one of those things where you are trying to establish um, an apple tree and or well, fruit tree orchard in the long term. So uh, making those little sacrifices in the first year, we're not going to miss a couple of apples this year if that means that next year and the year after that we're producing three, four, five, time, ten times that because the trees are healthier, stronger, and have established themselves to the point where they are actually productive. So uh, I hope that you have found this video uh, informative. We've certainly been learning an awful lot about fruit trees. A uh, big thank you to Harold in particular, who has been kind enough to spend a lot of time answering all of my emails and having great patience with what I'm sure are very, very uh, easy questions for somebody that is an expert like him. Uh, but, you know, we are hoping that this video is going to help other beginners such as ourselves with regards to what you can expect from fruit trees uh, and learning with us. So if you've enjoyed this video, uh, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, in our next video, we're just going to continue monitoring uh, the growth of our fruit trees. We'll keep updating you. Some of the apples are now growing at quite a, a rapid rate, so it'll be really interesting to see how they progress. Uh, we have started to experience some pests that are beginning to aggravate and uh, certainly affect some of the trees. So that'll be something that we'll definitely address in our next video. Uh, so if you don't want to miss out on that, please hit the subscribe button below and we'll see you in our next video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. You can also follow us on Twitter or check out our website at myhomefarm.co.uk. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you have any suggestions for any other videos you would like to see, please leave a comment. We hope to see you on our next video.